Hello everybody, Richard Owen here at Owen Automotive and we're back on my junk key type engine. Today, in this episode, we're going to get this thing running. Yeah, that's going to be a major milestone for this project and probably the last in the series of my junk key type engine. So to get that started, I first want to do the ignition system. Here's where the distributor goes in. I've cleaned off all the paint there because it needs to get a really good ground. But while it's still on this engine stand, just want to get the ignition wires in the V. It's way easier to do at this height than it is in the car. Yeah, so to get this done, first I'm going to have to do the distributor. It's sitting here. This is the original distributor and probably what is some aftermarket uh, wires and uh, original Lucas cap on there. I'm going to redo these wires. Uh, the old original style of these champions but usually they have the wrong resistance and they go bad. So I'm gonna try for the first time these Lucas alternatives. They look pretty smart. Got some seven mil cable, got a new low tension lead kind of uh, cover for the distributor. And this is really cool. I've had this for like a couple of years. This is a new old stock uh, ignition wire holder. And uh, I'm gonna have to clean up the bracket here. You can see it's kind of corroded but yeah, this is, was pretty rare when I got it, but now they actually are making these new. So I'm gonna clean that up a bit and put this system together. I'll show you what that looks like. But first, we're gonna disassemble this distributor. So we'll take that over to the vise and start ripping it apart. All right, got the distributor on my bench. Dad's gonna show how to take it apart. You can see the rotor here and We've got an example of what a new style rotor looks like. It doesn't have a rivet, much more reliable. So yeah, let's rip this apart. Taking the condenser out. Oh. This is a low tension lead gonna come off with this. Ah, the low tension lead, right. It's a waterproof uh, style, so this shields the distributor so water doesn't get in there. You can put just an ordinary low tension lead on the side instead of this one, but this is more of a Jaguar upgrade part. Plastic though. <laughs> Rotor's really loose, it's been lots of miles. Oh really? So when they say you move to oil, they want you to put a drop of oil in that center screw there to okay. lubricate this uh, advanced cam going on there. And we're going to pull these points of condenser out. It's been in there a while. Yeah, and this, this screw here is missing its lock washer. It should be a lock washer and then the flat washer. Okay. And a lot of times I see just a lock washer and no flat washer, so then if you tighten the points up, it can like, move them. So you want to have a lock washer and a flat washer. These points are aftermarket. And condenser is coming out. It's condenser there. Yeah. And it's got a posi drive screw in it, so these things get really rounded off sometimes. Oh, the yeah, screwdriver that. Nasty. just works away in there. And then this one here is what they call the ground lead for the base plate. See that one isn't even tight. So what this does is it grounds the base plate, and if this wire isn't in good shape here, it can cause all sorts of trouble because the wire has to ground the points, and it's a really important piece, this wire. Looks old, doesn't it? Yeah, it's probably the original one. Mm. Yeah, corroding away a bit, isn't it? It looks okay though. The wire is oh. supposed to be flexible like this, so as the base plate pivots, it can move around. I usually hook an ohmmeter from the base plate to this little wire and then just flex it and make sure it doesn't make or break continuity because sometimes these little wires will break internally and you don't see it. All right. So let's get Check this. the resistance. It should be, yeah, it should have no resistance. Okay. So that's the base plate out. So the base plate comes apart. The base plate is lubricated from the factory and it should be lubricated periodically. It pops apart like that, and you can see the contact points here, here, all around here, and here, the little nylon pads, oh. and also this little slot here. And the slot gets worn sometimes, so it's good to lubricate that. So this goes back together like that. Right on. So it needs, I use um, molly grease on the points where it wears. If you find this is worn, slotted, you can actually take pliers and just turn that a quarter turn. Oh, to nice, a, turn it around. To an unworn spot, yeah. So, I see a mark in there. So this is the advanced weights here. I mean, right springs and the advanced cam. And there's the weights down the bottom there. So you can actually see the action if I twist it. Oh, yeah, you gotta get your hand out of the way though, like this. You can see them spreading. Yeah. 
So that uh, degrees there, it says 20 degrees on there. Yeah. So that's the advance. So the advance is basically the gap between where this hits up against this post here. So you see that screwdriver width yeah. is how much advance curve it it's has. How much, how much it'll move. Yeah, once it gets to that stop, that's all done. So that's 20 degrees, which seems like a lot of advance. But, uh, so what I normally do now is, before I take this apart now, is I'll mark it with my paint pen. I'll mark the post here. I'll mark the advance. And I'll also mark this one weight. And that way, all three pieces go back together in the same orientation. So what I'll do is I'll just hook this up into the soft jaws right on the bottom here so that it can't turn. And we'll unhook the springs. You can just leave it hooked to the post if you want or take them off, no problem. So there's a screw in the center which should be pretty tight. Oh, nice. Love that crack. And oh, before I take this out, you'll see that this can go up and down slightly. And that's yeah. normal to have a bit okay. of play. That's no problem at all. You don't have to worry about shimming it or anything. This will just wiggle out. And it's got the weight stuck to it. The weights will just come off of there. One, two. Nice. And there's different weights. These ones have got a really long point on. Some are shorter. So lighter weight's going to advance slower. All right, got everything nicely cleaned and laid out on the bench. Cleaned up the body there. It's looking pretty nice. Got the new contacts to go in. This is from a company called Unipart. And they've been supporting the classic motoring industry for a long time. And unfortunately, they're out of business. So we're going to have to rely on some other suppliers to take up the slack. Got an intermotor condenser. Just for comparison here, this is a distributor off of Mark 10. You can see here it's made in the first week of 1966. And the main difference between this and the distributor out of our junk E-type is this vacuum advance. It's the same distributor body essentially, but it has the vacuum advance which is correct for the triple carbs. And basically it's almost the same thing. So yeah, we're going to put this Series 2 distributor back on the vise and we'll show you what it looks like going together. All right, just going to assemble this distributor on the vise. First step is put some of this uh, lubricant on the base there, right? Yeah, we want to make all the contact points lubed up with Molly. I got that little yellow dot which matches your yellow dot, so it's it's in the same spot. Just keeps the wear similar, right? Yeah, they're the same weight, so just keep them in the same spot. dot with a yellow dot so they'll go back in the same spot. And then we'll just hook the springs back up. Yeah, it's actually easier if you clamp the drive in the vise and that way it doesn't turn on you when you're hooking it up. So when they want you to throw oil in there, it's because it'll pool down yeah, here. So you, you'll put a little drop of oil on the top of here, and there should be a little felt disc that goes in here that stops it all from splashing around. A little round piece of felt. Uh -huh. You can just put it in there, and that's how it had it from the factory. So that gives it a nice smooth operation. You can just grab a hold of it and try and move it back and forth like this. If it's nice and tight, that's a good thing. And if it's feeling like there's a bit of play, it, it could be the bushing is getting a bit of wear on the distributed body and it can be replaced, the bushing can be replaced, but it's more of a machine shop job to have the bushing replaced. Uh, 
I'll just tuck this wire down so it doesn't get hooked into the cap. Okay, so now that can pivot. If it was vacuum advanced, you could turn this right now and it would pivot into the spring in the vacuum capsule, but oh. we just solid this one, no yeah, advanced. So. so we get points, yeah. unipart points. Yeah. Maybe our last unipart points. It says made in England on there. Oh, nice. So one of the things you need to do is you need to take apart the contacts and clean the contacts because even right out of the package they can sometimes have a little bit of oil residue on them. <laughs> that looks good. And then we'll put a little dot of oil, 3-in-1 oil, on a pivot here. Like that. that just lubricates the pivot point on the points. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to set this at 15 thou. So grab a fuel gauge. Will this, will this work? Tighten this up. And then we're just going to turn the thing and just basically Check it, the gap on all the all the lobes. Make sure they're all the same. And if you see that, what we got hmm. there, something very interesting. Hmm. What happened? Well, if you look here, and we put this in here, and we got 15 thou, a nice sliding fit, right? Mm-hmm. Then we check the next one. Less. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. And now we got a little bit. Yeah. Now we got 15 again. So you know what we got? We got a bent shaft. Let's carry on with putting it all together anyway. So right, we'll show you, you why it looks like going together. together. <laughs> That's a crazy. So the intermotor condenser. I also like to wrap around the condenser wire one turn, and that's just basically to keep everything tight and secure so it's not floating around. But I must say, if I'm using an old one, I'll sometimes not wrap it because the wire does get fragile, and if you wrap it, it could cause stress, so best not to wrap it if it's an old one and it hasn't been wrapped for a long time. And then there's the plastic bushing that goes on. So that's the correct orientation. So the two on top, then the plastic bushing, and that keeps it insulated from the center point. So straight through there, straight through there. And, uh, new rotor on rivetless. Yeah, so it's completely bonded. There's no rivet in it to short to ground. That's it. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's it. Distributor's ready to go if it wasn't bent. Yeah, you can see that distributor spindle there moving all around, barely making contact. Uh, she's it's, it's curved like a banana. Cool. All right, guys, you saw us build up that distributor, but it looks like it has a bent shaft, so I'm going to try to use another one. We Luckily, we had a beautiful uh, Mark 10 distributor here from 1966 that I showed you earlier. So we're gonna fit this to the car. Pretty simple, just got the clamp on here. And I know that the vacuum kind of takes off in this direction, so it should just slide right in. Got that fighting the cork seal a bit. It's going down. Okay, it's not quite seating where I think it would. Pointing at number one, so he must be 360 degrees out, 180 out, sorry. So I'm just gonna try it down here. Oh, there we go. So the dog drive is now engaged with the distributor shaft and the engine. And the next thing I'm gonna do is have to rotate the engine and just make sure we got compression on piston one as I do it. It's a bit of a, a check, so I'll show you what that looks like. 
Okay, I'm gonna rotate the crankshaft once. And the trick is to put my thumb over the spark plug hole and just make sure I'm getting compression on piston number one. And that way I'll know for sure where my rotor should be for piston one. Okay, there you go, I can feel compression. Awesome, compression going all the way to top dead center. So there we go, that is gonna be piston number one on the distributor cap. Here we are, we're tight on the distributor. The rotor's pointed to fire on piston number one. So now I know on my distributor cap, where the plug lead for number one, and it's gonna be right here, obviously. It's lined up right there. One little trick I like to do is just, after you know where, which one's number one, is just put the firing order all around the cap. It just keeps everything really accurate. Uh, you don't want to mess up a plug wire while you're first starting the engine. It would just take a while to diagnose. So there we go, got that numbered. Now we can move on to the wiring. All right, just gonna get the wires set up. To do that, just put some spark plugs in the holes, just some junk ones. And really what I'm trying to do is get this thing, all the spark plugs, wires wired through this holder. Uh, one thing I found out is that actually the brackets for the holder are in the wrong spot, they're for a saloon. But, I could, but I'm gonna go ahead anyways and use this. I think I can make it work even though this hook might be a little higher than normal. All right, just gonna take a guess at the length for piston number one ignition wire. Have to go through the hole in there, through the conduit around the front, and over here to the correct place of the distributor. Just give myself a little slack just in case. And then cut it off right there. Just taking a guess at the length. And finally, what I'm going to do is just label this as uh, piston number one. Don't want to get them all mixed up. And this is going to ensure. Keep them all together. So there we go, number one. And I'm just going to repeat this process six times. Um, you'll see for number two and three, I'll feed it in from this way now. Let's see if we get it. Oh, there she is. Lovely. And just kind of grab at that with the pliers and haul it out. All right, hopefully that made sense. Got all my wires here labeled, one through six. They're going through the conduit. They're going into the cardboard conduit. It was much easier to put them in from the back like this. And yeah, now I'm ready to go. I'm gonna fasten this thing onto the cylinder head and we'll work on the exact spacing. That one. Oh great, this one's even, sorry I bumped you guys. This one's out a little ways. Holy, I'm in for it with this. Hope it doesn't rip it off. Wow. Holy. Maybe the new part would have been better than the old one. Put a cap drop here. Well, now we gotta get this side on. Somewhat on there. Man, this is brutal. Oh look at that. Surprised I didn't break the rivets. Yeah. And normally with the uh, aftermarket ones I buy, no problem, but man, this old original, not happening. Oh, there it is. Okay. Getting it seated somewhat better here. 
Holy, I cannot believe that these rivets have held. They probably won't a long term. <laughs> All right, I got that cardboard conduit seated. Uh, it didn't go in easy. It's petrified and hard. The new ones are a lot more flexible and easier to go in. A couple things. This bracket here really bent. I'm glad those rivets held. I don't know if they'll hold for too much longer. And there's a bit of a, a spacing issue here with the cap. So I'm gonna struggle to put those on and we'll go from there. Okay, pretty happy with the progress here. Just trying to reform this cardboard conduit. We have done that is with this spark plug socket, a wedge, and the technique I'm gonna do is put a microfiber with boiling water in there. Just get her nice and saturated, uh, make it nice and flexible, and hopefully build a memory in that position so it won't foul the cap. Yeah, that technique worked pretty well. Built a memory into the cardboard conduit, so now I won't stress it out so bad. And there's lots of room for the plug, so that's great. Next, I'm gonna do the wire spacing. Okay, back down here at the distributor. All my wires are labeled, the distributor's labeled, so this is all gonna be pretty straightforward. Just gonna cut them to a nice length. Uh, put on the end here that goes into the distributor with the boot, and I'll show you what that looks like with the crimp pliers. Yeah, so these crimp pliers are pretty well labeled. You can see the pre-crimp here. That'll help get it. Hard to do this looking through the camera, actually. There you go, got it pre-crimped nicely on there. And then we'll go for the final crimp, which will be this insulated crimp, W crimp. There we go, got a good grip on there. It's not coming off. Boot on there, and that's for number one. Okay, now we're gonna repeat the process. All right, got those wires done, pretty easy job. Just ran a carbon wire for the coil lead. That supposedly suppresses a lot of the noise for the radio. But yeah, really happy with this. Loving the wire, way the wires are set up in that cardboard conduit. Yeah, that's great. So next, just gonna throw this engine on the ground. Made up a bell housing starter. We're getting closer to running. We're getting real close. All right, got the engine sitting on the ground. Feels like somewhat of a milestone. What this really does is it lets me get access to the back of the engine and the flywheel. See, I'm getting ready to put that on. You can see the original flywheel here. I had it resurfaced. Uh, the guys at Anderson Precision Machines, they said it was a couple thou out. So that kind of concerns me because I don't want to put this engine out of balance. Just to be sure I had it rebalanced with the original pressure plate. They said it was totally in balance with the pressure plate. So we'll only know how good this engine runs once it starts running. Uh, here's the hardware for the flywheel. You got the original bolts there all dressed up. Uh, the lock tab, I'll show you what that bearing's all about. So yeah, the next step is put the flywheel on. Okay, the first thing I do is take out the pallet bushing, got a little hook tool here, hopefully that'll catch the back of it and get this baby out. It's not moving. just gonna manually hack through this. Oh. 
All right, little bit of a fight, but it's finally coming out. There it is. You can see I just kind of cut it and it cracked the last little bit there. All right, just gonna mount the flywheel. Really made sure that these surfaces were nice and clean. Same with the flywheel. Uh, there's two dowels on the flywheel and uh, that means you can put it in one of two positions. One of the little tricks I have is that with the engine at top dead center, the B balance mark on the flywheel goes to bottom dead center. So that makes it so that it can only really go on one way and it's balanced with the connecting rod and there we are. Just gonna get my hammer. It's just kind of sitting on those dowels a little bit. Just gonna seat the flywheel on. It's looking good. I got the lock tab and putting the original bolts back in. All right, gonna move you guys up, show you a bit of a hack that my dad taught me. I gotta torque these nuts down, these bolts down, sorry. And one trick to do that is to use a bearing shell. Half a bearing shell, I got a bolt into the block right here. Just place the bearing shell in the teeth and uh, it'll stop this from rotating. I'll start all these Bolts off at about 40, and then we'll do the full torque spec up to 67. Okay, it's nice and seated. Now before I pull over the lock tabs, just going to check the run out. Okay, so I was on the other side of the engine. Looked like at about seven thou there. Let's just get it again there. It's peak right around there. So what's our run out here? No, that's uh, five thou. That's okay, I think. All right, five thou's okay with me. So I am going to seal the deal and pull over these lock tabs with the. Uh, Adjustable pliers here from Nipex, they're lovely. All right, the flywheel's in, happy with the progress. Got the constant pinion shaft in there, and the reason being is that's gonna help line up the clutch disc and the pressure plate. First, I'm really gonna clean off all these mating surfaces. Gonna use some brake cleaner, got my gloves on. Don't wanna get any of that stuff on me, that's for sure. Okay, keeping my clean gloves on, just gonna put a bit of molly grease here on the inside of the plate where the splines go. Just wanna make sure that that has lots of nice lasting lubrication. Just using some of this liquid molly product, the German product. Okay, so once that's in there, I'm gonna use this constant pinion shaft to line it up. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way here. Take the constant pinion shaft out. I'll drop the pressure plate on it. Hopefully you guys can still see this. Now the pressure plate has two sides. This one's labeled for the gearbox side. That just slides on there. I'm ready to insert it into the crankshaft. What this will do is it'll make sure that the clutch disc is nice and aligned with the, with the crankshaft. Now the pressure plate here, it also has to be lined up correctly. I have a 
white line that was given to me by the balancer so I know which way the dowels will go. There we are. There it is. Well, if you're wondering why this video took so long to get out, it's because we've been busy here at the shop at Owen Automotive in Sydney, BC. Got lots of stuff on the go. One thing coming up is this cylinder head. It's an all aluminum unit for an Austin Healey 3000 and that comes from Dennis Welsh. So that'll be a really cool install. But for now, we got four E-types to contend with. Here's the shop E-type. My dad did uh, a timing chain on a V12 here. Yeah, it's quite the power plant. Really covered up, a real engineer's car. See a timing cover and water pump all clean in there. Did it without taking the cylinder heads off. So yeah, that is possible. Just doing a clutch on this really, really nice Series 2. You kind of see the method here of bringing the engine up from the bottom without taking the hood off. Got a big metal strut in there. But yeah, that's just balancing in there, waiting for motor mounts. Finally, my dad's doing a Series 1 fixed head. What year is this, do you know? 66. Carbs are coming out. You gotta do some jets. Just behind my dad here is the junk E-Type motor. So yeah, let's carry on and get that thing running. Holy smokes, look at that. Finally got everything together to get the junk E-Type running. Almost everything you see here had to buy it or source it. The only thing that actually came with the engine in this pile is the front exhaust manifold, but everything else I had to source. Uh, some neat stuff here. Got a newly rebuilt um, gearbox that me and my dad put together. There's the starter motor, just painted that. Got this release bearing here. This is an original graphite release bearing. I think it's a nice mate to the original pressure plate. Uh, let's see how that goes. And yeah, got a lot of cool stuff here. Gonna really get all the components onto the bell housing, attach it to the transmission, and we'll show you what that likes, what that looks like going on to the engine. All right, just gonna put the transmission on here. Got two long pins here that hopefully will support the trans. It'll make the job a little easier. Plus two gearbox. So using the jack there. Oh, the jack's gonna just go down a bit. Gotta take the jack down. Oh my, oh he's in the shop there. Oh, there a bit. What's that? Now I'm just touch one. Ooh, that was good. Okay, gonna do the oil filter for the Junkie type engine. I'm gonna use this new filter, it's a paper filter. This is pretty indicative of what modern filters look like these days. As an example though, I have an original, OG original felt filter here, and this is uh, gonna do a much better job at filtering, uh, but this one's kinda dirty, so I'm not gonna use it. So I'll show you the process, pretty simple. Got the canister itself, and the big long bolt that goes into the block. Now series two is gonna be coarse thread, series one is fine thread, so there's a difference there. There's a bit of a seal in here, rubber seal. Draw that in. First thing that goes in is the spring, then a little washer, then a felt washer I made up. Then the large one, go like this, and the paper filter. So yeah, let's see what that looks like on the block. Here we are at the adapter. This is definitely a Series 2 adapter. I think it's different from the European cars. And that's because it can take two different size of filters. This big large one here, I think that was for the saloons. But for our purposes, I'm gonna put a little O-ring on the inside ring here. And that's where our canister will sit. Just 
Just going to snug it in there with this beautiful Jaguar spanner. There we are. Not too tight on those pop metal threads. Yeah, I'm showing you guys a box, but inside are some SE carburetors. What do I mean by that? Look at those beauties. Yeah, three triple SU HD8 carbs. Loving that. This is everything that you would need to convert a uh, Stromberg carbureted car over to triples. So this is the 4.2 manifold, which is correct for the later engines. And yep, it's one of my favorite parts of the car. They're just so glorious. Uh, definitely really gonna look good on the junky type engine. So let's throw them on. Okay, just about to put those beautiful carburetors on the engine. Uh, just want to show you around. Put on this stabilizer bar. Super easy to do right now while it's out. Same with the slave cylinder down here. See where it goes, this hard line, a flexible line. Put it on right now, it'll be so much easier than later. All right, let's get these triples on the junk E-Type. Awesome, great, thanks. Looking good, eh? Wow, beautiful. On the topic of triple SU, have a look at these beauties. Just inch and an eighth on a two liter AC Ace. Loving these exhaust manifolds too. Isn't that just lovely though? Okay, just gonna put some oil in the junk E-type engine. Just use conventional 2050, but you gotta put some zinc in. Just using this Lucas product, and it has the zinc in it, and that'll protect a lot of the valve train. Usually you use just half a bottle for every oil change, although these E-types you could probably use a whole bottle. Okay, okay, we are getting close. Look at this. Got a jerry-rigged fuel system in there and a way to control the ignition. We're getting super close to getting this thing started. I want to build up the oil pressure next. To do that, just gonna take out the spark plugs, clean out the V, make sure nothing falls in the combustion chambers. Okay, we cranked it over a bit, but we're gonna do a little more and see if we get any pressure on this engine. Okay, we got pressure, success. All right, with oil pressure, gonna put the new spark plugs in. Got some Champion N12s here. Just gonna set the gap using these pliers. You can tap these uh, on the bench, but this is my preferred method because I don't wanna damage the spark plug or crack the porcelain or do anything like that. All right, it's finally time for some noise and some performance. After uh, about 11 videos and a lot of work, we're ready to start the junk E-Type engine. How about that? Yeah, just hooked up this exhaust system from a Series 1, just a used system. Might have a slight exhaust leak, might be a little smoke, that's normal. Uh, my dad's going to have to manually hold the choke out while it starts, so yeah, let's see how this goes.
Wow, did you guys see that? Holy, the engine started right up. My dad was holding the choke, and these triple carbs are perfectly tuned, so the engine started right up. Was super smooth and high RPM, low RPM, and that's really what I wanted to see because we didn't take the time and money and get this thing balanced. What this is is a factory balance, all the same engine internals as it came from the factory in 1969. So yeah, really loving that. Just noticed three things that I'm gonna address and we'll do a second run. One was the exhaust leak. Yeah, it was, I just used the old gaskets on there, so I put some new ones on here. That was really noisy, so I'm gonna keep that noise down. One was a bit of timing chain rattle. That might be because it isn't oiled up enough yet, but I'm gonna give it a good go here. I'm gonna put more tension on it with this cam and really try to quiet down that noise. The third thing is I'm getting a little bit of coolant in the V. You see it there, it's just coming out of these washers and acorn nuts. And that's because the studs run all the way up from the water jacket. So I'm gonna put some sealant under those, get those three things wrapped up, and we'll do a second run. Alright, bit of a bonus. We're going to start this engine up with no exhaust whatsoever. Let's see what she sounds like. Awesome. Got a bit of sound out of her. Loving that. <laughs> All right, did you guys see that? Loving that. The Junkie type engine is a complete success. I guess the next step is getting this into a car, and I promise you I'll make that happen. I'll show you guys what this looks like going up into an, a, an E type for sure. We'll get it going down the road. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, but first I gotta thank a lot of people, especially the people that provided original parts for this engine. That keeps it authentic, and I like using original parts wherever possible. So you have a list here, Peter Metcalf, Hugh Pite, Dana Ferguson, Simon Scott. thank you so much for the original parts. A lot of the pieces you see here in front of me came from them. I also have to thank Will and Frank at S&G Barrett. They provided a lot of the seals, bearings, gaskets, and new pieces I wasn't able to source anywhere else, and they were totally on the money. So thanks guys, that was really sweet. A lot of other people also worked on this engine, so I gotta thank them. Anderson Precision Machine, just down the road from us here. They did some awesome machining. They did that beautiful cylinder head refacing the skin the bottom. What an awesome job that was. They also surfaced the flywheel and balanced it to the pressure plate, and that was, it was on point. This engine didn't shake at all, so that was really sweet. Scotty at Blast It, he did the vapor blasting on the bell housing, oil pan, timing cover. That's why they look so good. So thanks, Scotty. Lastly, the Randy and Georgina at Electroshine, they did the cadmium plating on all the original bolts. And yeah, they're gonna look this good for a long time. So that's really sweet, loving that. And lastly, I gotta thank my dad. Thank you so much. 
he really had the time and the patience to go through, show us a lot of these systems, show us how to put it together correctly, and make an engine that really just, from the first few cranks, was totally operational and almost ready to put it into a car. So that takes a lot of uh, skill, and thanks for passing on the knowledge and not keeping them trade secrets. Yeah, and also, it's my dad's birthday this weekend, so happy birthday, Dad. Right on. So yeah, that does it for my Junkie Type Engine. This is the last episode of my Junkie Type Engine. But don't worry, there's lots more coming. I'm going to buy a 1967 fixed head, a coupe, and we're going to put this engine in there and see what that looks like, see what the performance is. So really looking forward to that. I'll bring you guys along. Have a couple other cool projects and that I'll hopefully be able to do on that car. One is fit a full Series 2 cooling system. I have the duplex fans and the radiator and the shroud and everything. So I'll put that on the Junkie type engine and see how it performs. It throws a lot more heat onto the carb, so that'll be interesting. We'll see what that does. I also have a untouched, completely original set of 3.8 triple SU carburetors off a 1962 car. And I'm really curious to see what the performance difference on those so clean those up put that on this engine see how that performs yes yeah, so there's lots to look forward to yeah thanks guys for coming along on this long journey I know five hours is a long time I apologize if this has went on a little too long but the devil's in the details if this was a how-to it would be 10 hours long yeah right okay well that does it for this episode of my junkie type engine as always if you have any tips tricks trade secrets Please share them in the comments below. I love to read them. I love to hear from you guys. And yeah, that does it. So yeah, it's all over. See you everybody. Bye-bye.